Welcome to today's video. Today's video is created um, to celebrate the collaboration between Stencil Girl, Seth Abter and Wow Embossing Powder. So we've got a blog hop going on right now, so don't forget to visit me on our blog while I've created you a tutorial for two cards. Hi all, so I'm going to start off with the Stencil Girl Design Daily S512. Um, now I'm only going to be using almost like the cherry blossom of that stencil. Now using the actual Seth Aptar mixed media brush I'm actually going to apply it to an old makeup sponge that I haven't used but I've left it in my stash to use for these kind of occasions when I need to dab on. Um, now I find this is going to be the best way to distribute evenly through the stencil the actual clear sticky wow embossing ink. Now it's actually a slow drying ink so you could take your time and I'm just going to place this stencil, I'd secure it down now with some washi tape and on behind that I've got a cream cardstock that is a size of a card front. Now I'm just going to press that through the stencil and then I'm going to lift that up and that's where I'm going to place the embossing powder. Now I'm going to generously apply from the Cosmic Trio from Seth Aptor this, uh, this actual powder. Now this one's the Sea of Tranquility. It's got some beautiful teal, um, granular, clear and white and it looks like a little bit of speckle of um, black in there. It's it, absolutely is stunning. You can use this for different variations. Now I'm a card maker, I'm not a mixed media artist, but I'm going to show you how the products you, you can use that you have in your stash. If it's mixed media material, you can use and apply to your card making needs. So that's the approach I'm going to deliver today for you for my two card creations. So what I have done, and it's got a clear gloss um, and sheen when it's heat embossed. It's so stunning. I absolutely love it. I've used my Wow Embossing Heat Tool to set that. Now I've got some acrylic paint. So I've had this in my stash for many, many years, and it's still going strong. So this is called, uh, it's from the Pent Art, and it leaves like, uh, it's a paint set for patina effect, which... If I'm going to do anything, I'm going to do a patina effect. I've got the lightest of the teals and I'm going to brush it on just on the edges. So my approach is going to be, it's going to have like a rustic edge. Now I've used a finer tip brush for this and it's soft. I'm going to add like a copper, it's almost like a copper metallic on there as well but what I want to achieve I'm going to dry this off but what I want to achieve prior um, with this metallic is a brushed look so I have got an older brush that I use for almost like a stippling brush it's a bit harder bristle and I'm going to use this brush for that almost brushed effect I'm going to add a little bit of that metallic I'm going to put a little bit of water to the side because I almost want it a little bit transparent these acrylic paints are quite opaque in color um, as I said my I want to achieve almost like a brushed element and look so I'm going to be fairly rough and almost as heavy-handed on the edges and then as I lift towards the center I'm going to go a little bit more lighter handed and I do like the overall look that I achieved in this because I just want it to be um, soft, um, brush, goldy, metallic um, to it. And I'm just going to do this throughout all four sides. Um, and you can see the kind of look I'm going for there just by um, that stipple brush effect. Once I'm happy and I do fuss around with this a little bit and I didn't realize how much fussiness I was. <laughs> I'm going to then step on to the next stage of the card. Once I'm happy with that, I thought, yep, I will heat set it again. Now, what I used for heat setting the paint was the level and heat set speed. I found that Sea of Tranquility ink really suits the Catherine Puller Daydream ink. And I'm just going to, because I don't have matching cardstock, I'm going to make my own matte 
layer is use an ink panel and just only brush around the edges. So I've got a blending brush there, another makeup brush coming in handy in these creations. <laughs> um, and I'm going to just bring that along and that color along just to the edges only. And you can see that I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Um, I just like that effect that it leaves and the contrast you can see between the paint, that panel and onto the inked panel. All right, once I'm happy with that, I'm going to foam mount it on. I'm going to also add some, this is hemp natural like craft looking twine. I'm going to add a, three layers across. I'm going to secure it down with some tape. And then what I'm also going to do is to help secure that down, I'm going to be using the 3M foam mount tape here. And I'm just going to add that everywhere. This also adds extra security to making sure that that twine doesn't move. I've got a wow embossing stamp here. I love this one. This one says with love and it's got a heart. I'm going, I've stamped with my ultra slow drying ink from wow, the ink pad this time and the opaque bright white powder. Now this is super fine detail because it's a sentiment. That's what I lean towards. And I'm going to heat set that now with heat setting two, which is a higher speed fan speed and a higher heat source. So that melts really quickly. I'm going to cut this into a strip. It's the same width as my foam mount tape. I actually fluked that. Um, so I was like, nailed it. And then I'm going to cut it on an angle and then cut the excess of the, uh, the foam mount away. Once I'm happy with that, I actually left that really almost like rustic as is. I didn't feel like it needed too much. Now just adding liquid adhesive on that panel and I am going to mount it on a vanilla card base. So that card base, which is a vanilla cream color, matches the original top layer there. Now leaving it leaving it um, as is or you can add some clear sequins. I chose the smaller out of that pack and we're on to card two. So this card we're going to use the next stencil. Now the stencil, another one from Stencil Girl. This one is called Main S150 and we're going to play now with a texture paste. So with the texture paste, I well any sometimes with my adhesive I do use a stencil um, spray. Now this one here is what I could get from Australia. Hopefully I'll get a pixie spray soon my way. Um, and I sprayed the background outside because it's an aerosol can, and then I um, waited that, wait for that to dry, and I came back and I stuck it down on a white piece of cardstock. Now, with the paste, going back to what I was saying, um, this translucent paste from, from Wendy Vecchi is amazing. It's really tacky when wet. So it is perfect for the Wow Embossing Sparkle collection. So I'm going to show you, basically, I spread this on like I would peanut paste or, you know, Nutella those in Australia, we love Nutella, um, on my stencil. I went for a five by seven card base here too, by the way, um, a mat. I wanted to get as much um, of this stencil as possible and then it gives me a leeway on how I want to use it. Now, how fantastic does that look? I just basically poured my sparkle all over it and set that aside to dry. Now, Here's, I cut it down to size and that square. I'm gonna use the Hero Arts um, Infinity dies in the hearts. And I'm going to die cut this heart out. I'm gonna make sure I secure it down with some washi tape. And then I'm going to run it through my Couture Creations Go Power and Emboss. So it's an electric die cutting machine. Um, and it's here in Australia, so that's why I'm using it. I've got the Seth Apta sprays here. I play with two different types of colored sprays. The two sprays I use are turquoise and sea spray. Now, these are quite vibrant. I didn't realize how vibrant these are 
great colors um, and because they were so vibrant I didn't want to take away too much of the effect of the stencil and in, um, glitter that panel that I used so the trick to down to tone down any of that is I used vellum so I cut the vellum down to size to be a smaller panel and that panel was then mounted on a white side folding card base. I found this was a really great method. If anything I want to tone down, I use it with my um, embossing powder, embossing background panels as well. It comes as a handy tip. Now I die cut this Thanks die from Catherine Puller and I've actually got three dies there cut um, out and I've glued them together with liquid adhesive. So I'm doing two layers of gold embossing here. Now I've got a little pin to hold that in place and I heat set the first layer. The reason why I chose two to heat emboss it twice is because I love the molten look a die or a any wording or any embossing leaves, especially the super fine detail when you've heat embossed it more you know than once it looks fabulous and it has this very molten type of look which hopefully i will be able to hold it up and you'll see in in the actual frame here and it it almost like yeah, it's hard to explain but it's a really smooth finish you can see it here looks fabulous now the tip with him um with adhering down any dyes is I tend to use more liquid adhesive especially if I'm then going to put it on a texture such as embossing paste um, that we've used now I've added those are the two cards all I added was sequins on either corner to hold the vellum down and that was it so I hope you enjoyed today's card creations um, and I hope you hop along to our blogs over on stencil girl Seth after and wow embossing so I've created a great YouTube tutorial which you've just watched and so don't forget to head over to my blog as well. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll catch you and can't wait to read your comments.